ladies, gentlemen, and hunters of all ages, we've heard you crying out into the void asking for builds, builds, builds. Wild Hearts is full of things to do, and as you get further into the game, the kimono get harder and harder, tougher hit zones, higher health pools, more damage to do to you, all of those things that simply make you wish there was a way to make it easier, and today we are bringing you the best claw blades build that we've made so far. One of the coolest weapons in the entire game, the claw blades let you fly around the battlefield with grace and engage the kimono with absolute airborne fury. So what can we do to increase that fury to the absolute maximum? Well, let's start off with the armor itself. Armor in Wild Hearts is a bit limited when it comes to offensive skills specifically. There are only really a couple of pieces worth using in each slot, depending on if you are human or kimono path. And today for Claw Blades, we've decided to go kimono path, as the weapon doesn't need a massive stamina pool, nor does it rely heavily on the usage of Karakuri. So kimono path simply gives us more options to raise our damage further. With that said, let's look at our specific armor pieces then. First up, for the helmet slot, we have the Ember Plume Head. This gives us deaf ears, which makes us immune to roars, 5% solar protection, which raises our attack and defense stats by 5% during daylight hours, and also 10% fatigue recovery, which makes stamina regeneration 10% faster. You can always rest at your bed before hunt, or in a tent while on a hunt to set the time to morning so that solar protection is always active, or alternatively, you can also make the Fume Beak Helmet, which has deaf ears and lunar protection to the same percentage, and then just switch this one on when it's nighttime to make it even simpler. For either one, you want to make the Kimono Path modification of the armor to help push you a bit further into Kimono Path. There are a couple of competitors for the helmet slot, but to put it simply, none of them will give you a 5% damage boost for claw blades, so they just aren't quite as good. And that isn't even mentioning the extra damage that we get from deaf ears, just letting us keep uptime during roars for free. For the chest piece, we are using the Ember Plume one again. This has 26% blaze resilience, which simply makes it harder for you to be inflicted with the blaze ailment, 15% self-control, which is 15% faster stamina recovery when only one life thread remains. This won't happen often in regular quests, but without spoiling anything specific, I will say there are some extremely important and difficult endgame quests that specifically have only one life thread from the start, and in those, this skill will be active 100% of the time. Then the big important skill on this armor piece is 7% Desperation. Desperation as a skill raises your attack at the cost of lowering your defense by the same amount. As a result, this skill makes life a little bit more dangerous, but a 7% attack boost is simply more than any other chest slot armor can give you. So it's worth it if you can manage it. I'll mention here that my armor set has literally 37% desperation total, so 37% reduced defense, which is the highest I've been able to get of this skill, and even that doesn't get one shot by the hardest fights in the game as of yet, as long as you have eaten for food buffs. On top of that, claw blades themselves are an extremely evasive weapon by their own nature, with the ability to pull off a high iframe dodge, mid combo, and even mid animation, as well as sort of just being above a lot of attacks due to being in the air most of the time. So you should rarely be getting hit using this weapon in the first place. This one should also be absolutely kimono path modded to make you reach the right point on the path bar. For the arm slot, we are using the Ember Plume Gloves. These have 5% strong arm spirit, which gives you 5% crit chance for a short duration after performing Hunter's Arm, 5% critical draw, which increases the critical hit chance of your draw attacks by 5%. This skill basically has no real effect for claw blades. Our draw attack is unimportant, and we never actually need to sheath, but the reason that we use this armor piece regardless is once again, 7% desperation. No other armor in the slot can provide 7% attack boost, and so even though there is a wasted skill on this armor piece for us, it is still the best one that we can get. Then for legs, we are using Final Boss. I'll blur out anything here that is spoilers just in case, just show you the skills that are on it themselves. 12% rude health reduces the buildup of any ailment by 12%. Fusion Master won't be active in our Kimono Path build, but we do get the 10% Battle Spirit. This simply increases your attack by 10% when a Kimono is enraged. Most Kimono will spend about half of the hunt or more enraged in my experience, and so if we look at it that way, this averages out to about a 5% attack buff over the course of an entire hunt, and thus extremely good for a single armor piece. Then we come to our boots, and the boots don't really have great skills if you're going kimono path. My shoes do suck, my feet are dead. As a result, I'll give you a couple of choices depending on how you want to personalize your build. There are the Wayward Brigand boots, which come from Ice Tusk and Cobalt Lava Back materials. These have 33% tangle recovery, which does exactly what it sounds like. It makes you recover from the tangle ailment 33% faster, 6% grab master, which reduces stamina loss when grabbing onto a kimono or climbing, and most importantly, Resurrection. This skill will make you survive a single hit that would otherwise kill you. This obviously is quite good, especially as I mentioned earlier, there are some incredibly important endgame hunts that only give you one life thread to work with in the first place, and also we're using quite a bit of desperation, so you do take more damage. That said, this skill is invaluable if you get hit a lot, but useless if you would never actually
actually trigger it if you would never get hit to a point that would kill you. So if you are confident in your evasive playstyle with claw blades and just want to get some sort of actual damage out of your boots, you should instead use the King Tusk feet. These give you plus three savage, which is somewhere around a 2.8% attack boost in our current armor and weapon set, as well as plus five health boost, which is literally plus five health added to your bar. As well, I should mention if you do use the resurrection boots, you should Kimono Path mod them, simply because it increases their defense. We don't need the Kimono points at this point, but defense is defense, right? After that, let's talk about our weapon. I've made a few builds for other weapons for my personal play up to this point, and I have to say the claw blade weapon was the toughest one to actually make choices on. Not because there are too many good options, but because there are actually very few that actually make sense with the general claw blade playstyle, especially because a lot of the claw blade specific skills just aren't really that good. We've gone with the right side final boss weapon as our end goal, as this has 10% Hawkeye on it, which gives you 10% bonus damage to Kimono weak spots, which is any time an orange number pops up in combat. And in ideal gameplay, you will be hitting the orange numbers pretty much exclusively, and with claw blades being how they are, being able to stick the claw into a part and then target that one part on repeat, it is actually very doable for this weapon more than most to just hit orange numbers. We also wanted a high raw attack weapon, and this was simply the most damage gaining claw blade could get from the highest raw attack weapons that there are at 10%, with good positioning and attack aiming. Also worth noting, this weapon comes 15% soaring bird technique, which simply makes you take 15% less damage when you're hit by an attack while you're in the air, which is obviously most of the hunt. Also, it has 8% turbulence fury, which, well, honestly, after multiple hours, literally hours of testing, I cannot make this actually proc. The wording says that it gives you an attack boost for a short period of time after a successful claw attack at maximum claw gauge. That simply doesn't happen. The damage boost doesn't trigger no matter what I've done with the weapon. I don't know if it's a bug or what, but we'll essentially just say for now, this skill is not the reason we picked the weapon, it's just sort of there. With that said, let's jump into the inherited skills that we picked up along the way to make this weapon overall have about a 40% attack increase over its raw stats in most situations. Early on, you want to make a stop in the first half of the weapon tree over at Rat Claw Rhododendron 2 for the 5% Tiger's Den inherited skill. What this is is simply a 5% attack increase overall at the cost of slower recovery from ailments. This is just sort of really worth it, especially when it means you get 5% attack boost from a single inherited weapon slot. We then progress all the way to the left side of the lower ranking tree for minimal material cost to get to where we want next at the start of the mighty ranking tree, which is the Nobusuma Claw, where we pick up 5% Hawkeye. This is just another 5% bonus damage to Kimono weak spots and thus self-explanatory why we would actually want it. From there, we have to go down and around to reach Summer Camellia Claw 2 for 5% Aerial Strike Fury. This skill is simply 5% bonus damage to aerial attacks. This sadly doesn't count our big super finisher move in the claw mode, even though it does start in the air, but it lands you before the damage hits, so it doesn't count, but it does affect every other claw mode attack, every other aerial attack, which makes it worth having as that is a very large portion of our actual damage. Then we go across the middle line as this has low resource costs all the way to the right side of the tree, progress down to Agate Claw 2 for the 15% Desperation Inherited skill, and carry that down to the final weapon that we looked at earlier. A bit of a long path, but definitely not the most expensive weapon to get to its final bonuses, as a lot of the steps are actually early kimono materials or just map gathering bits. With that said, let's take a moment to talk about talismans. There is one that you absolutely want to get, and that you can guarantee, as it isn't an RNG drop like most of the talismans are, this one is at a set location for every player in the game, and it gives you the Claw Master skill. This skill makes your claw gauge start higher when implanted within a kimono, meaning you can put your claw in when your blue gauge is around 40 to 50 percent, and it will actually be full claw gauge once the claw is in, making it significantly faster to get back into your high damage, high evasion aerial style of gameplay. The talisman itself is found on Fuyu Fusagi Fort, the winter map at this specific location all the way in the south on a bridge that leads to nowhere. There is a little ice wave with a sword on top of it, interact with the sword here and you'll get this talisman. Other than that, simply go for talismans that have an assortment of the skills that we've already mentioned today if you have them. Talismans are mostly RNG and different for each player, so I can't recommend specific ones for you. But use the things that we talked about today, the skills that we mentioned, to work out what your priorities are as far as damage, and see if you have any that are laying around to equip with those skills. With that said, let's have a quick chat about one skill that we aren't using and why. Ignore them. There is an inherited skill here called Claw Boost Fury. From a brief look at it, you may think it boosts all attacks that you do with the claw attached by 12%, but that would be a brilliant damage increase to our highest damage attacks if it actually did that, right? Well, as it turns out, this skill literally only affects the actual claw attaching attack itself, nothing after.
afterwards, nothing before. Just the clock going into the kimono, nothing else. A bit underwhelming, isn't it? Now then, let's have a look at our final skill tally. We have 8% Turbulence Fury, which as I said earlier, is essentially a null skill at the immediate moment. Claw Master from the Talisman, plus three Savage from the Boots, plus six maximum health between the Boots and one of my personal Talismans, 10% Fatigue Recovery from the Helmet, 26% Blaze Resilience from the Chest Piece, 12% Rude Health from the Legs, the 9% Final Blow is exclusively from my own Talismans, but it's a good skill to look out for if you are looking for things for Talismans. 5% Aerial Strike Fury, 10% Strong Arm Spirit from the Arms, but also one of my Talismans, 15% Soaring Bird Tutelage, 13% Hover, which is from one of my Talismans, 5% Critical Draw, which does basically nothing for us, 2% Fire Boost, which does exactly nothing for us, 10% Battle Spirit from our Legs, 15% Self Control from the Chest, Deaf Ears from the Helmet, 15% Hawkeye, and 5% Tiger's Den on the weapon itself, then 37% Desperation, which is a combination of the weapon, the chest piece, the gloves, and then 8% from a couple of my own talismans as well. Then we have 5% Solar Protection from the Helmet. As for how you'll actually be playing the weapon in general, for the basic carrot curry that you'll always want, you need to have the boxes and stakes pretty much always. These let you make the Chain Trap, which is excellent downtime creation for every single kimono in the game. The boxes will also let you make the big wall, the bulwark, which are invaluable in a few fights, and the stakes turn off fall damage after a long fall, and claw blades can occasionally get flung 100 meters into the sky, so this will save you from some pain when that does happen. For your other two slots, these will change a bit based on the encounter. If against a flying kimono, you always want torches so that you can make fireworks for repeated downs when they're in the air. And on some fights, you'll find more use out of harpoons, which means that you want springs. But your general loadout, I'd say for most kimono, should be boxes, stakes, torches, and the celestial anchor. The torches and anchor together let you make the celestial cannons, which are great damage and occasional knockdowns, but they also let you make the healing vaporizer, which I would say is even more valuable for claw blades than any other weapon, simply because of this. It lets you heal a massive amount, pretty much a full health bar, without needing to sheathe your weapon like you do for healing water. And this is very specifically important. Once you have attached your claw to a kimono, if you sheathe your weapon, you lose the claw, which is a massive loss in damage. You have to rebuild all the way from the start. This, however, lets you heal with the claw still attached without needing to lose said claw attachment. It's just a win-win. You can also use your boxes to set up a high angled claw attach, but for the most part, I find these are best used for fusion karakuri anyways. You most frequently will be using the fusion karakuri that are chain trap, celestial cannon, and healing vaporizer. As for your general playstyle goals then, you want to get to a claw mode as quickly and frequently as possible, as that is where the vast majority of your damage comes out. Hit the kimono with a full attack one combo, then you can jump and do an aerial attack one combo, dodge an animation if necessary, and keep attacking. When your bar is about half full in the bottom left corner, you want to attach the claw to the weakest spot on the kimono as best as you can. Then do your vertical spin attack, as this does the most damage per input. After you hit a few times, you'll start to glow red, which means you can do the finisher, but don't do the finisher early unless you absolutely have to, because glowing red actually makes your vertical spin do even more damage. So, try to get in as many vertical spins as possible as they do a ton of just wrecking the kimono in front of you, then when the meter is just about to run out, do a horizontal spin so you can do your finisher for that last big pop of damage. Do all of this on repeat, watch for your openings to do the bigger animations, create your openings with traps, and of course never forget that you can dodge with massive iframes even in the middle of literally any animation that claw blades will do, so you can avoid being hit whenever you need to. Simple as that. And there you have it everyone. An offensively beefy build for claw blades bringing you to absolutely extreme heights. Keep in mind this isn't made to give you tons of utility, simply to push the damage to its maximum. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and seeing what claw blades are capable of achieving, and I hope you enjoy using this build if you make it for yourself. Like if you like the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye